you know, I think it's actually interesting because while we uh, really could with no with no confidence, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I cannot predict the future. I have no idea what's going on with any particular company. We don't recommend individual companies on this show. We don't have the qualifications to do that. The show is for entertainment and education, but we can't see the future here, which is why we always talk about low cost broad based index funds, right? Like buy the entire market, buy them all. We know what we know. We, we can at least tell you how to keep up with the market. And that is more than good enough. The vast majority of investors fail to keep up with the market. But I do feel like inside of our community, there has been unnecessarily some dogma focused on one fund. And, and we are responsible in part for our, for our putting too much emphasis on this, but I think we're going to try to rectify that situation today. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there, Jonathan. And we, this actually was spurred on by a Facebook post, a really great Facebook post. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, but it, uh, Kathor, she said, why is VTSAX so popular here? It is a good index fund for sure, but so is FXAIX and FSKAX, which I've subsequently learned are the Fidelity 500 index fund and the Fidelity Total Stock Market Index Fund. And she said, what am I missing? I did the search below today and cannot find a good reason as to why I would pay $75 to buy VTSAX as a Fidelity customer while there is a similar index fund with no fees or minimum trading value. Tell me more. And I think she's spot on. I, I mean, my response, and I, I'm not sure that it came across as clearly as possible, was you wouldn't pay $75. If you were a Fidelity customer, you had a Fidelity account, and they're trying to charge you $75 to buy VTSAX, which is a Vanguard total stock market index fund, you simply would not do that. She's absolutely right. There are wonderful total stock market index funds, S&P 500 index funds at Fidelity, at Schwab, at all these other places. And so I think it's really important here that we're saying we are not crazy about one particular fund at one particular company. Obviously, Jonathan, we've talked a lot that we like what Vanguard stands for, and that's why we've talked about VTSAX before. But what we truly believe in, and again, this is not investing advice. This is not me telling you to buy a particular thing. But what we believe in is broad-based, low-cost index funds. I think... The, the broader, the better personally. So I personally like total stock market index funds. But what really matters is the expense ratio, right? Like that is the key because we've talked about just how destructive fees can be on your overall investing return. And again, like I talked about 10 minutes ago, this is a 50 to 70 year project, right? To get wealthy. This is not a oh, that tiny little fund doesn't matter in the next year because this fund is hot. Like, I don't look at nonsense like that. I look at what gives me the highest likelihood of being successful in a 50 to 70 year project. And for me, keeping my expenses ultra, ultra low is the best way to get there. Yeah, there's there's a lot there. So first of all, with, with someone, it's like for for this lady in this particular question, I am with Fidelity. You know, and they're trying to charge me $75 to purchase VTSAX because I hear from the FI community that VTSAX is where it's at. And, and your point, no, that, that's crazy. But what you can do, uh, Fidelity has their own total stock market index funds. And as it happens, this is kind of interesting, for various reasons, both of us, I am uniquely qualified to provide this information, have ended up with funds at Fidelity, at Schwab, and at Vanguard. Right. So I actually have funds with each of them. So now I can, I can tell you from a place of authority that you can get total stock market index funds at each of those, all of them in house, which you will likely get the most favorable rates on fidelity is saying, well, yeah, you can get a competitor's mutual fund through us. If you want, we're going to charge you for it, or you can just use ours and we charge you no commissions, no fees at all. So I'm just going to give you the ticker for theirs. They're the one that they market as being very similar to the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, except with no basis points, no fees at all, is FZROX. FZROX. That is their total stock market index fund. Schwab has one as well. And 
theirs, their ticker on theirs is SWTSX. Now, in this post, she actually mentioned a couple others, and those are entirely reasonable as well. There may be some slight nuance between how they figure out which funds are in there, but largely any of these will give you will give you very, very similar results. I think one thing that actually is interesting to kind of talk about when we're discussing these different types of funds and we're talking about index funds versus maybe actively managed funds, et cetera, is and we've spent a lot of time in the past, so I won't, I won't spend too much time here, uh, is we're, we're avoiding fees because fees are guaranteed. And so it used to be, if you look back like 10, 20, 30 years ago, you would very commonly, it would be very common to see at least a 1% expense ratio plus maybe some sort of a 1% assets under management fee. I mean, 2% or more. Um, and now thanks to leaders in the space like Vanguard that are owned by their investors, it drives those fees lower. So when they make profit, that profit is actually used to drive the fees lower. And that's how we're ending up with expense ratios, like four basis points. Now I understand that's all that's, that's, that's legalese, investees, right? So like what that means practically though is, so you have a million dollar portfolio and then the old model, it was like 2%. Um, yeah, you, that's 20,000 bucks. $20,000 is what that would cost you each and every year. And when you compound that over a period of like 20, 30, 40 years, it actually ends up cutting your portfolio in half. In perspective, like four basis points, which is Vanguard was really one of the first to get there. It's costing you $400 on a $1 million portfolio. So if you only have 200,000, I say only, right? Only have 200,000, it's costing you 80 bucks a year total, right? That's insane, that's insanely low. And then what that has done is that has signaled because Vanguard was getting incredible market share, massive amounts of money was moving out of assets under management and into these low cost broad-based index funds. Fidelity and Schwab were feeling, feeling a little left out, right? And they felt the need to compete and to offer these as well. And theirs have gone even lower. Schwab, I believe, was at like three basis points, maybe even lower now. Fidelity went straight to the heart and had a zero, zero basis point fund. And there's some nuance here. Some funds are maybe better than others in small ways, but your results are going to be largely the same. You're going to keep up with the market. And Jonathan, basis points, you've said that a bunch of times. I, until maybe about seven years ago, I had no idea what this meant. I know I can vividly remember the uh, VP of my department mentioning basis points. I'm like, what on earth are you talking about? It's essentially just a hundredth of a percent. So in this case, if uh, Schwab has three basis points as their expense ratio, it's 0.03 percent for the expense ratio. So that's three basis points. It's just fancy jargon in essence, but you will hear it a lot. So just like anything, it's important to educate yourself on the language of what you're talking about and, and you will hear that a lot.